Yo, what is up guys? My name is Punkers, and if you're watching this video, then that means you want to learn more about competitive Call of Duty. I'm making this video with the hope that with the release of Black Ops 3, there will be a lot of new players that are going to get into the competitive scene. In this video, I'll be talking about the competitive game modes, the general rules for said game modes, and the ways you can break into the competitive scene. If you guys enjoy the video or it helps you out in any way, be sure to smash that like button, and without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so the first thing you need to know is that currently, competitive COD players play four different game types. Hardpoint, uplink, capture the flag, and search and destroy. I say currently when I talk about game types because there's a chance that either uplink or capture the flag will be removed from the rotation due to lack of popularity in the community. I'm going to go through these game modes starting with by far the most played mode of all, hardpoint. The objective in hardpoint is to hold as much time as possible in the rotating areas, referred to by the players as hills. The hill will rotate every 60 seconds to a new location, and you get one point for every second you have with one or more players on the hill uncontested. If you would like to learn the hardpoint rotations on the MLG competitive maps, be sure to check out my rotation video. Each hardpoint game lasts for 5 minutes, however, if a team has control of the hill, the timer stops. The timer will start again if neither team is in the hill, or if both teams are in the hill at the same time. If both teams are in the hill at the same time, neither team gains any points until one team is killed out of the hill by the other. The game will be played until either one team reaches 250 points or the end game time runs out. Now we're going to move on to one of the more well known game modes, Search and Destroy. The objective in Search and Destroy is simple. The first team to win 6 rounds wins and you will switch sides between defense and offense after every round. If you are on offense, your job is to plant the bomb on one of two bomb sites. The bomb timer is 45 seconds once planted, and if the enemy team is unable to defuse the bomb before the time runs out, then the offensive team will win the round. If you are on defense, your job is to either prevent the bomb from being planted or defuse the bomb before the 45 second timer runs out. It takes 7.5 seconds to defuse the bomb, so you must leave yourself enough time to do so. Both teams can also win the round by eliminating the entire enemy team. However, if you are on defense and the bomb is planted, the only way to win is by defusing the bomb. To do so, you can either hunt down the enemy team or you can go for what's called a ninja defuse, where you start defusing the bomb and hope that the offensive team won't check. Next, we're going to talk about Uplink. Uplink was introduced in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and while it was considered to be a great new competitive game mode, it has not lived up to its name with the release of Black Ops 3. Uplink is best described like basketball. However, you get one point for throwing the ball into the portal, and two points for running the ball into the portal. Currently, there is a 5 second respawn delay, meaning that when you die, you must wait 5 seconds before you may spawn in again. If you're carrying the drone, aka the ball, you're given about twice the amount of health as a normal player. However, you cannot use your gun while holding the ball. The only way the drone carrier can kill someone is by hitting them with the drone. Each uplink game lasts about 10 minutes consisting of 5 minute halves in which the teams will switch sides. If both teams are tied at the end of the game, it will go into overtime. In overtime, each team will try to score the drone once. For example, if one team gets a point in 2 minutes, the other team must score in under 2 minutes to win. However, if the first team to score got a 2 pointer, the second team must score 2 points before the time runs out as well. Our last game mode is going to be Capture the Flag. Although this game seems self explanatory, we have slightly different rules in Call of Duty. There are two 5 minute halves just like Uplink, however, there is currently a 7.5 second respawn delay, and the flag captures will reset at half time. The team with the most amount of flag captures at half time will win that round. The other team must now get more flag captures on the second side as to win the second round to send the game to overtime. For example, if one team scores 3 flags in the first half and the other team scores 1, the first team will win that round. However, on the second side, the second team only needs to have at least one more flag capture than the first team to win that round and send it to overtime. Overtime capture the flag works just like overtime uplink. For example, if the first team scores in 3 minutes, the second team must score in under 3 minutes to win. Something new that Treyarch introduced this year is called the Ban and Protect system. The Ban and Protect system is done before every match and it allows players to decide what guns, equipment, score streaks, or specialists are used in the game. One member from each team will choose to either ban or protect an item one at a time. If a player bans an item, no one will be allowed to use that item during the match. If a player protects an item, no player will have the option to ban that item after. Each player is given 30 seconds to make their choice, 30 seconds to choose their specialists, 90 seconds to change their classes, 30 seconds to change their score streaks, all before the game begins. Be aware that there are currently 4 things that may not be used even if not banned in the ban and protect system. These items are the UAV, the care package, the hater, and the XM53. If you're going to play competitively, it would help to learn each specialist and its two abilities. I won't bore you by listing them one by one, but I strongly urge you to try them out and practice each of them equally in case one of your favorite specialists gets banned or your teammate takes it first. 
Now that you guys are a pretty good grasp on what competitive Call of Duty is and the game modes that come with it, I'm going to give you more of an informal little talk about how you can break out into the scene and get a lot of practice. So first things first, if you've never played competitive before, I'd recommend going into the Arena playlist on Black Ops 3 and playing the Pro Series playlist. What this is going to do is let you play by the same rules I mentioned just now and play against players that are at your skill level and you can get a good feel for the rules and the guns you use. You can also use the Ban and Protect system unless you don't want to do that, in which case you can go on the Mosh Pit playlist. Once you guys have gotten a good feel for Arena mode, I'd recommend and going to either mlg.tv or umggaming.com. These are both websites where you can schedule matches against other players and play competitively against people that are at a pretty high skill level. On umggaming.com, you can also play wagers, which is where you put up money for a match. You can say $5 for search and destroy, and whoever wins that wins the other team's $5. It's a lot of fun. I'd only recommend doing that if you're a very good player and you've been playing for a while. If you're brand new, don't do that yet because the people on those wagers are very good. If you want my advice, I'd say go to mlg.tv, sign up for an account, and play some 1v1 game battles, or get your friends from school, play some 3v3s or 4v4s, go into the arena mode and ask if anyone wants to play GBs. It's very easy to find people to play with. If you really can't find anyone, go on the game battles forums and ask for people to play. There's always people on those forums. Or if you have a Twitter account and you follow a lot of competitive players, you can tweet out for people to play GBs with. You can tweet at Sean Abner, you can tweet at COD retweets, all those types of stuff and find people to play with. Once you start playing a lot of GBs and UMGs, you'll get a good feel for the game, and at that point, you'll know what to do next, I can promise you that. Um, that's really how you break out into the scene, that's how you're going to get better if you've never played before. Alright guys, that's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I really hope all you beginners out there that want to learn more about competitive COD, come join the scene, come join the community. It's a lot of fun. I've been playing for about two years now, and I really, really enjoy it. Got started with my friends from school, and now I met all these cool people that I play with every day. I really recommend trying it. If you're worried about it, you think you're not good enough, don't worry. We all started there. Just play a lot, and you'll get better. If you don't really want to commit to it, don't worry about that either. Some people just play GBs one night a week or a couple nights a week. You don't need to commit to it. You just need to play for fun. If you enjoy it, you can commit more time. But guys, that's the do it for me today. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.